Hey guys, I am here today with my Mikuni Carby. It's off my Mitsubishi 4G52. Um, the accelerator pump stopped working. You could have been pressing it. It was not actually uh, squirting fuel. So I ordered a rebuild kit today. Um, this, that's it there. It's a fuel mister kit. That is the number, the model number of this rebuild kit if anyone needs one. I also printed out a full comprehensive uh, manual on an A3 paper for the Carby rebuild so I can refer to it along the way. So pretty much what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start dismantling the Carby. The reason for the video is uh, so I can keep a track of what I'm actually dismantling and where things will be going. So um, pretty much I'm just going to start taking things off um, as I can see them. And I'm going to start laying them out. So, first, I'm going to start off by taking off this fuel cutoff solenoid. So, pretty much, when you turn the engine off, this turns the fuel off. Now, there's a little o ring there that sits there, and just one screw. So, we'll put that aside. It's easier to work with the carby when you have less things on it. Um, here's a little vacuum block off, you know, take that off as well. Now we have all these coolant lines here as well, which should come off. Now for today we're just using normal variety of screwdrivers, flat heads, and Phillips heads. Now what my plan with this carby is, is to pretty much strip it down, give it a clean, uh, put the rebuild kit through it, and hopefully the car will uh, run better because it was running worse and worse every day. So now I'm just going to pull, you can really see how these uh, little bits and pieces are corroded on here. Oh wow, look, look at that. You see how the nozzle, nozzle there is absolutely blocked. There you go, look at that, absolutely blocked. Oh, you can't even poke through it. So that's, that's, that's no good. That was the next thing that I was going to talk about is this carburetor actually has a water operated choke so it detects the temperature of the water and then it actually uh, you know adjusts this flap so when it's cold it should be closed but when it's warm it'll actually open. Highly doubt, I hi highly doubt that this was working in this carburetor because first of all it had a zip tie here as well so it's very unlikely. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to keep stripping things off. Now, next thing I'm going to take off is the actual fuel accelerator pump, which is right here. So, take that off. That's just got four screws on it. It's always nice to do it by hand. Sometimes people use like an electric screwdriver, but I prefer to do it by hand. And one thing you guys have to remember is never to over tighten bolts because they do strip very easily. So originally I thought that you know my plunger inside this fuel accelerator pump might be faulty because that is a very common thing. They dry out, they wear out because it's a plunger. So I took mine apart and it was actually fine. Here we go, let's take that off. Oh, you see what happened there? Just dropped the spring. Very bad. That's why I have this cardboard here so if anything falls off, um, I actually got these edges here. Um, you don't want to be uh, losing things and parts on the ground, so definitely very important to have a nice clean area and not to lose things. Cool, so this here, that's the spacer plate. Um, for some reason my carby just had it looped like this, so... We'll leave that there. There's a little gasket here. Take that off. And I'm going to keep all these parts together. So it'll be easier for me to put them back together. So, for example, here, I'll, I'll show you the plunger. You can actually see the plunger here. And it looked fine. There's no cracks on it. It, it re moves reasonably freely. So it, it'll definitely pump but it was not pumping in my case. So now what I am going to do is grab some pliers and I'm going to undo 
this little retainer to actually take the fuel accelerator pump off just because I want to get it out of the way so I can clean everything and and lay everything out instead of having things just dangle you could take this little sir clip off there so let me have a look she looks like this one doesn't even have a sir clip there interesting Now this one here, it also has a spring. Almost do it by hand. Great, so that's off. Now watch out so the spring doesn't shoot out. Now, if you notice, there was a little washer here as well that actually sits flush with the spring. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to put that part back on there so it is easier to remember where things go. Now that's your little fuel accelerator pump there, which is fine. Alright, now your four screws here. What I like to do with the screws as well, instead of just chucking them in a pile, it is better just to put them back in the hole like that and then just sit it, sit it aside. All right, so now we can take this hose off as well. Oh, look at that. Let me see if I can blow through it. I can, so it's not blocked. But if you have a look in here, very corroded. Very, very nasty, nasty stuff. So the electric choke was definitely not working correctly. Awesome. All right, so now I'm just analyzing to see what is next on the carburetor. So what I'm going to start doing next um, is to actually take off this plate here. This whole side assembly is actually bolted up to it. So is that better? Might be better. This whole assembly is bolted up to it. So. What I'm going to do, my plan is actually to remove remove this electric choke. So if we have a look, the spring is there. I'm going to unclip the spring. Just like that. Maybe I'll just leave the spring dangling there for now. Um, so now it really is a question of just unbolting things. Now I'm going to start off pretty much, it, it, it shouldn't really matter which order you do things now because everything will have to come apart. So I'm going to start off pretty much from the first screw that I see, which is this bracket here. And actually, sorry guys, that is not, that is not the first thing that I should be undoing. That's the thing with these good things. If you haven't done this before, you won't really know. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing this screw there that actually holds the bracket. That holds the bracket there, so that's the spring bracket. Side. Great. So now we pretty much have to see what else is actually holding all of this in place. So now that I can already see that, that there is a little little tricky screw going to be right there. So what I'll do next is I might take off 
might take off this diaphragm, which just pops off like that. And then just undo the nut on the diaphragm. I'm just gonna take this off because I'm gonna put it on my lap to crack it. There we go. That's cracked, so now that should just pull out. There's also this little vacuum line here. And it looks like it actually won't let me pull it out because this electric water choke is in the way so it really looks like it's complicating things this electric choke here not too happy about that it really does it no good now I can see there's a little another little spring tiny little spring down here that's the secondary spring that looks like a bitch to remove as well wow this is actually really interesting the way this whole part is bolted up I'm going to start off by taking now these top screws off just so I can start getting a few things done. I have already pre-cracked them so they should come out reasonably easy. I'll put all of those in the, in the corner so they should be all the same size probably besides one which will be longer. That's the long one there, and that one goes into there. Now there's also one screw in the middle of this hole here. It was on there pretty loosely. is same size as all the others so no, no size difference great so now ooh, look at that it's actually almost coming off coming apart so all that's really holding it now is just that spring so what I'm going to do now guys is I'm just going to quickly put one of these screws uh, lightly back in because now I know that all of this is actually on the one assembly. So now what I have to do is I do have to take this secondary spring off. There we go. Very rusty. Alright. So that's off. Now... There. Great. So now, technically speaking, all that there is is just is just this linkage. Now, this spring, right? It sits on this little tab there. The spring. And it clips in. Ooh, I can actually see now. It actually clips into the bottom of this water pump, uh, of this choke heater. Great. So now what I have to do is I have to remove this tiny little circlet.
which is going to hold this lever in place. So there we go. That's the clip that holds the bottom linkage in place. Put that aside. Now that linkage should hopefully usually things are in there pretty tight and you you don't want to be really forcing things either so you gotta just take care and take your time out great so now technically speaking if I undo this bolt that I did up before this whole top part should come off with the float and there it is and as I can see take the gasket off there we go. Now, as I can see, there is a lot of junk in this carburetor. Not sure if you can actually see. You can see all that black stuff down at the bottom. Which is a big no-no in a carb that needs to suck fuel through. So let's have a look. Scrape some up. So all of these deposits here, put it on my finger here. It's pretty much like sand and it's gritty, it's grimy. That is going to clog things. Now I'm just going to... Oh yeah, then I found the problem. There it is. Found the problem, there it is. I'll show you guys in a second what I'm talking about. Just inspecting the float, making sure the float's not scratched or damaged. So now what happened here is, if you have a look into this one here, there's a something was there and it was stuck. Let's see if I can tap it out. There we go. So now that, that came out. That was actually stuck inside it. So for example, now you can see that that actually fell out and I didn't see which way that actually came out. Um, so hopefully, you know, looking through this manual here, it'll, it'll show us somewhere. There we go. Right there, there's ball and a weight. It does not mention that other part though. As you can see, I got the ball and I got the weight. But then it looks like I got another little part that sits on top. And that was actually wedged in. That that there was my problem. I just found it because I saw it, it was wedged. It wasn't actually free. 
So, that's, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, what do I do with these little parts is, just so I can keep them organized without them rolling around everywhere, I just get some double, some uh, masking tape, just like that, and I kind of just put these things on it, like that. So now, they won't really roll away or fall away, and just stick this in the corner. Just like that, that's where I keep all the parts. Just like that. And we can go continue. There we go, now I can see. Very interesting. Either way, a lot of junk in this carburetor. Just, just junk, gunk. So now I'm just going to really just inspect everything, kind of go. Go over all the little passageways just to inspect things. It's also a little bit of play in the shaft. Great, so now I'll just move back to this top part because I want to focus on this uh, on this choke. And I guess I just really want to inspect what's going on here. Also maybe start cleaning some of these parts. Great, so... So in my opinion guys, I just, I do not need this choke, and I do know that it is faulty, and it does not work. Plus I live in Australia, it's pretty warm. Besides, in Canberra, it is freezing here, because we are surrounded by the mountains. But, I've never really had a problem with this car running. So, I'm going to just remove this whole unit. Now this screw here, I'm not going to chuck into the same pile as I did the other screws even though just to compare they are the same they are the same so I, I could technically chuck it in there but I mean I don't want to get confused so I'm going to chuck it in the other corner so now the next thing we have to take off is this what else is holding it on there? Okay, another little sneaky screw under the middle shaft there. So it looks like now that I do have to take this side bracket off. screw. Now this one here is actually shorter. So I don't want to mix that up. I'm just going to leave that one here for now. Take this bracket off. So 
so that's one little piece for the choke you can see it's got a spring on it I'll put that back now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly pop these screws See, that's the diaphragm there. From what I can see, this diaphragm here, if you have a look closely, it's cracked. Yep. It's cracked there. Cracked there. I can poke a screwdriver through. So, that's the problem. So, I'll pull that out for now. Now, I can actually access those two side screws for the vacuum actuator which actually operates the secondary barrel which is vacuum operated okay now while we are at it I did notice that I still I left this float ball in here which is actually a pretty sensitive device and I do recommend replace re removing that first so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this little needle out which holds it put that down now that float will just come off like that there's no other parts in there now here is your actual your feeder if I pull that out that's what seals the fuel so it either stops the fuel flow because it seats down or when it's open it lets fuel in great so that's out of the way comes in the kit as well as a replacement so now what I can go back to doing is take this one off here so again lay into it Oops. There we go. So now, hopefully, that will remove this vacuum solenoid, which operates the secondaries. There we go. Now, again, what I'm going to do with these two screws that came out of it, I'm just going to put them back in there. Just like that. Just you know, just the only reason why I do that is so I can remember. 
where do they belong? And now this one here had a nut on the top as well. I'll put that back on there. I'll give all this a clean as well. Now very important here is to test this, make sure it actually works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to suck on this hose and see if it moves. So you can see that even if I hold pressure on it, it's not leaking. If it was leaking, it would move down like this. And it's not. So we know that this one here is in working order. Great. Now, what else is holding this body on? There's one more screw holding it there. So let's get into it. And that one there is actually a longer one as well. So the one that sits there, and it actually goes through into the chamber there. So that's actually going, it's a hole going through. There's a little hole there, right there. That's where the screw goes through. now it looks like there is nothing oh well there is actually sorry this the choke plate is still being held in place what we might have to do for this one is to is to actually we might have to remove the choke blade from the carby to be actually able to slide it out because at this stage it looks like this whole unit here is pressed in and also I don't know why this has a zip tie around it it's really annoying it's been there since day one time to break it off Okay, so we are going to have to actually remove these choke blades. So I'm going to loosen that up. One little screw. Loosen that up. Another little screw. Now that choke blade should just fall out. Just like that. Sorry guys, just trying to adjust the camera a little bit. Great, so now that choke blade's off. Now this here should slide out just like that. There we go. Now what I'll do is with this mechanism, uh, straight away, I'm just going to put these screws back. It's always nice to keep everything together. That's back in place. That's going to hold that. That's a screw for that. Oh. Well, 
what I might do now is I might put this plunger back in as well. So if we have a look at that again, that plunger used to sit in there. So I'll feed that back in. And I'll put this spring back in as well. It's got a little, little spring. Put the three screws back in. I must say it is a very um, interesting way how this choke works because it takes the water from the engine and when it is cold the spring will retract and close the choke but then when the water heats up it actually opens it up great so that's back in now I'll just take these off these were the two original ones I put in back previously now little problem what I just noticed was this little rubber washer Be honest, do not know what that is from. That's the problem when you work on these copies. These things will fall off and you do not know where they come off. Anyway, I'll put this one back in there. So I can just get rid of this whole mechanism. There we go. So now the interesting thing is, yeah, to find out what that little, uh, what this little washer was from. It is a plastic one. I'm just going to quickly analyze it all. And I think I found it. I think that washer actually sits here. Yep, that's where it sits. Great. So that little black one actually was a ceiling ring that sits in this little hole. And that sits around it. And then that seals onto this little vein here. So we're going to have to remember to actually block this one off. there. Now as I said this screw here that was a long screw that goes through the carby so again you probably just want to maybe put that one back or something um, doesn't really matter but it is a hole there so that means it would be sucking air through there so and you obviously don't want that Cool. I'm just going to put this little one actually in because it might fit better. Might not protrude as far in there. You can see it, it's coming right there. Cool. 
So now that's the main top body. All there is really left on this one to strip is um, is just this um, this bit there, and then we can give all of this a nice clean. Okay, great. And mil is it? Yep. Oh wow, you want to guys see something funny? So, here I can already see all this dirt, greedy dirt. But, on top of that, there's a little filter that sits in there. Let me just tap that out. Now, that's going to be interesting. Let's see if I can get that out. There we go. Wow. Guys, you ready for this? Watch. So absolutely mangled it's not that it's just mangled but look at all this rubbish rocks metal dirt that's horrible sorry guys someone is just calling me I'm gonna have to answer this phone call hey buddy how are you yeah I'm pretty good I'm just uh, did you just ring did you just no, I did not ring. I'm just actually working in the garage in my carburetor. Why? What did you say? No, it wasn't me. Yeah, 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 I did. I'm just actually still meeting up with the girl t uh, later because I was busy all day today. So I didn't have actually time to chat. But... I'm going there later on tonight, so don't worry. Oh, really? You were mowing the lawn? Really? I'm just uh, taking off the carby. I mean, I'm, I'm pulling, stripping down the carby on my car. Um, and dude, as filthy as rocks in it, you know? And things blocked and... Yeah, so definitely needed a clean. Well, I went to the engine shop today and we're trying to decide what to do and see what's cost effective, man. Do we go 350? Do we go 383 stroker? Um, you know, so yeah. Anyway, I'll call you back, call you back later, yeah? Okay. Bye. Okay. All right, guys. So, going back to the carby. Now, so here we have the, that's the whole choke assembly, which we will no longer be using. Now that little clip before that I actually pulled off here, I'm going to get it now and I'm just going to put it back because it's always nice when you have less parts lying around and more parts back on the thing where they came from. So at this stage, this is something we will not be needing. Now. Last thing, I actually put this on the wrong way, so one second, I'll just put it on the right way. Then we can move on to the next part. So this part here, which is called the top cover, is ready for a clean. Let me just flip that. I 
did accidentally put that in the wrong way, didn't I? There we go. That's better. Now this here is literally junk. I mean, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but you can see how blocked this port is. So, guarantee you that it was not working. Right. So this here, put aside. And you would not believe what I just did. I just put that on the ground and the little black washer that was there is now gone flying. So that's not fun. Oh, and believe it or not, look, found it straight away. What are the odd chances of that? What are the chances of that happening? What I'm going to do is tape it. Because I don't want to be like, ooh, what is this one? So I'm going to just tape that to the thing. Now there's no loose parts on it. Great. Okay. So now moving back to this part. We got the side plug. You got your two jets down there. So now I guess it's just a question of stripping this down and separating this part here. It is rather dirty in there. So it's got two screws on the bottom. So let's crack those. Oh yeah, pretty loose. Same size screws, put this down. So now that they should just pop off if you tap it. And guess what? A little ball just fell out of somewhere. That's just great. I have no idea where that ball came from. Just great. Hopefully it's in the manual where the ball came from. Hmm, doesn't actually say. That's so fucked up. Well, that's uh, that's a problem, guys, because there's a little ball that fell out, and I do not know where it comes.
Anyway, going back to separating this base. Let's just get that off. So that's all going to need a clean. I actually think it comes in the kit. I think it actually comes in the kit with this adapter. Just double check. Oh, look at that. comes with a instruction. Thank God. Alright. And actually it comes with all the little springs and and everything. So that's great actually. That's a bit of a help. Alright, so well, luckily that ball fell out of somewhere, but you know, we got the instructions, so that's the thing with these things, everything is seized and nothing is actually going to come off pretty easily. So now I'm going to take that, uh, I'm going to get a razor blade, just so I can get underneath here, just so I don't damage anything. I reckon this car be here has been on this car for a very, very long time. So as you can see guys, we're up to about an hour now. We're up to about an hour, and we're pretty much done pulling the whole thing apart. Now I guess the only other thing that's left to do is to clean. There we go. You can really see how nasty that is. I didn't actually want to damage this part here. So you can see how it sits. And now if I take it off with this gasket here, you can see it is actually blocking those two chambers there. Like that. Pretty much all lines up anyway, so you wouldn't really be able to get that in one, I don't think. But anyway, so now this piece here is the same piece that will come in the kit, but what I like to do is that this piece actually looks reasonably solid to me. 
I might have a hint that it could be possibly better than the one they gave me in the kit. So I'm probably just gonna give this a clean later as well. Degrease it, pull all this old gasket off. Don't have to be doing that now, but I just want to at least get some of this stuff off. Because uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to chuck it in a in a little tub with some degreaser, maybe some soapy water, just something to break all this grime down. Water doesn't matter, you know. I got I bought some carby cleaner as well, which is a must have. Anyway, that's it for this part. Can worry about that later. Put that aside. Oh, this is just all the junk. Great. Looking good. Now, for example, all of these surfaces here, you don't you want to be careful not to necessarily like scratch them because the gaskets will have to seal to it reasonably nice but you know if you get a bit of sandpaper or you don't want to actually dig into this alloy much because it, it can scratch it but just for now I'm gonna give it a little light scrub and also Guys, yeah, just give it a little scrub. Any progress? Yeah, I'm actually uh, filming an, a video while I'm doing it, yeah. like an instructional video. How does, um, how does the carby fuck out? Okay, so how it actually fucked out, right, mm -hmm. was I found the problem with the accelerator pump. There's, there was this little uh, mm -hmm. there was this little plunger, yeah. and it, it was actually sideways. Oh. So somehow it shifted, maybe wobbled loose, and it got stuck. Isn't it screwed into position? No, I think that one just actually sits on there. Mm, okay. So it looks actually a little bit worn. Okay, that's and then, so that, that was the problem for the accelerator pump. And then this here was the filter. Like, bust, like, full of rocks, you know, like... What? Like, you know, like, grit. Okay. Full of grit. Probably sand sort of... So that was busted as well. Because down in the bowl here, you can see, like, heaps of, like, powder, you know? Mm. See? Sand, pretty much, like little. So yeah. basically, this is from not running an air filter. I don't think so because oh, no, 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 because this here is the internal circuit for fuel, so no air gets in here. This is all fuel related. Oh. So, oh, okay. not running an air filter would mean that like your pistons get damaged. So you had a bad, uh, you had a bad fuel filter earlier on in the in the. Dude, the thing is, like this thing looks really old. Plus, then now here, this this here is actually interesting. This is the the choke setup, right. and the choke actually runs on hot water. So, when the water's cold, the choke is closed automatically. Automatically, and as it starts heating up, what well, doesn't work? No, because look, blocked, ah. corroded, right. a absolutely corroded. So why don't you just get a whole new carby? Oh, they, they you can't really get a whole new carby. Okay. Yeah. So you have to fix this one. Well, so how do you fix I, I ordered the rebuild kit, but I'm actually not going to worry about the choke. Oh come on! No. Why don't you clean it out and use it? No, it's it's shit. Just drill it. Drill it. Just uh, yeah, yeah, but but this plunger here, it's going to be all corroded inside because water flows through it. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fucked inside. Okay. There's no point. Plus, okay. it's hard. It, it it's all this clutter around the carby too. So. Right. I never really had a problem starting it. I think the only problem starting it was it wasn't tuned right. It was always cold as well. 
but yeah, it's diff- when it's cold. I think it was just a tune because like I did get it running pretty mm. well for a while. Okay. So now that's the base plate. Jeez. So that there is the. That's where the throttle is. That's the fuel bowl. You got your float here. That's the secondary vacuum. Mm. So now these two screws. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm actually doing a data log of where everything goes. These two screws are actually the ones that sit on the bottom there. So what I'm going to do with those is Amazing. put those through here as a reference. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Almost, Almost done. Yeah. About an hour to strip. Okay. Do you have any containers? Like yeah. old ice cream containers or... Or anything in the bin? Oh, I was just gonna like soak these parts in something. So what I'm doing now is just clearing this. And so all that really is now to take apart is those little jets inside. And you just got to be careful so you know where they actually came from. And um, that's really it. Then I'm just going to give it a, a spray and a clean. That's good. Yeah, that's perfect. Just got a hole there, so. Oh, yeah. It should be high enough that you don't, won't be a bother. Yeah. So what I do now is I always kind of clean the surfaces first because when I give them a clean, I don't want to be rubbing this down later. I want all of this kind of clean now, so I don't have to do things twice. Alright guys, well I think that's it for this video now. You know, there's there's a few more things to take off. Um, for example, whatever the hell this is. Um, I guess while the camera is rolling, I'll... Uh, let me just see what it's doing. Yeah, while the camera's rolling, I'm just going to take, I guess, this last part off. Now, someone told me that the carby has all these little screws here and I've been told not to mess with them because apparently they're factory set and we can mess things up so honestly I have turned them before I think um, so I hope I'm not gonna have problems with that Anyway, I'll quickly, while the camera's rolling, is pull this one here apart. Ooh, that's a bit loose. Well, I think I've actually maybe already loosened that up before. And honestly, guys, um, when you do these jobs in film and you talk to yourself or to you guys, you really um, get to understand all these components better because you're not just pulling stuff off pointlessly. So here we got a gasket. There's a little another little jet. I think that's the slow the slow jet, slow idle idle circuit or whatever they call it. I'm not too familiar with these terms and names much. So three screws. 
hold this tight. There's a spring in there. Wow, big spring. Always do everything carefully so you don't have things flying across the room. Now, and here we have another plunger. Interesting. That plunger actually looks reasonably well. So now what I'm going to do, do with these is shit. Sorry, guys. It was out of the out of the video before. There. Yeah, sorry. So. Let me just show you again. This here came off the side there. You had a gasket. Then you had this sitting in like that. The spring pushing down on the plunger as it does. And then that moves and slowly opens up or something. Three screws holding it. Right, put that aside. Okay, so now that that we we have that loose, there's a little jet there. Probably leave that in there for now. Now it's pretty much ready to come. Ready to come apart now. This one here is actually coming out like that. Looks really dirty in there as well. So I think this other one should come out as well. Don't want to really force it out. It's very easy to damage these little parts. I'll try to get that one out later. Don't want to force it out now. Um, great. So that's pretty much that. And that's pretty much that. So now, for example, I've also noticed that there's a bit of play. So I'm going to maybe put a little washer there just to or maybe tighten up the shaft. Just to just to eliminate the play. So now I'm gonna just give everything a nice wash and a clean. And then um, the second series, I guess, will be inspecting all the jets and uh, doing a reassembly. I'm just going to pull these gaskets off. My battery's about to die on the phone. 10% left, so... I um, hope the video is not too boring for you guys, but... I'll keep rolling. It's really important to get all these surfaces nice and clean